Ladies and gentlemen, this is Casper uh, Vision and podcast number four. And beforehand, I wanted to say that um, I was super excited about this weekend. And uh, I've, I've, I've had to say to myself, I'm not nervous, I'm excited. Because we've got an absolute legend. And if you're not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe to Casper Vision, okay? And um, do the, uh, the little bell notification. But today, we have somebody... Okay, that I met a few weeks ago by pure accident, and I just asked, I thought to myself, if you don't ask, you don't get. Ian McNeese. Welcome. Ian McNeese. I can't honestly believe it, and thank you so much for being <laughs> here. Um, it is, I'm just going to put, I'm just going to go through a couple of things, a couple of movies that you've appeared in. Now, this is all on Google, by the way. All right, so it might be right, it might be wrong. Um, Ace Ventura 1 and 2. Uh, no, just just the uh, two. Just the two. Just second the two. One. Yeah. Um, Fulton Greenwell. That's right. Yes, yes that's the character. Uh, the Englishman. Yep. White Noise. Yep. Dune. Bridget Jones' Diary. Oliver Twist. Day of the Dead. Doctor Who. From Hell. Conspiracy. Valkyrie. I mean, that's just that alone. There's probably a lot more. Oh, there is, mate. There is. There's, there's <laughs> like. What off the top of your head? How many movies do you think you've been in? I have no idea, but I think I think when I look at IMDb, I think there's about 130 entries a from hundred? various various TV shows and films and that. Do you remember every single one of them like it's your baby? <laughs> no, I don't. But I mean, really? No, no, no but I, I mean, I, I'm extremely fortunate. I, I mean, when I first started out, I thought to myself, will I get a theatre job from job to job? So I had no idea that it would turn out like this. Incredibly fortunate, really am. Well, because before we started recording, I said to you, I've got, I found out something about you, and um, you're looking nervous now. I am. <laughs> but you did uh, um, acting school in Taunton? Yes, I went to Taunton School in Somerset um, from uh, the age of, uh, well, I was in, in prep school, at th phone school first, and then Taunton School up until the age of 18, and that's, that's where I got the bug, because I... They had a wonderful drama school, a drama club there. Yeah. And that's what I did. I did play after play, and my O levels and A levels went out the window <laughs> right. because I concentrated on my plays. And that's where I got the bug. I absolutely loved it. What, what was it about it you loved? Well, the fact that, um, I don't know, the, my very first play I ever did I, it was about eight or nine, I think it was. And I'd, I just uh, it was at phone school, and, and I'd just been to America. Yeah. with my father who worked for Eli Lilly, which is an American drug firm. We'd been in the States for a year. I came back, I had an American accent. Really? <laughs> I was eight years old, and, um, and there was this play they did, and, and I auditioned for it, and I got a tiny part. I was a little Roman soldier on, on, on the stage with, with all sorts of other Roman soldiers. We were all in a line, Yeah. and uh, there was about eight of us, all, all with you know, little spears, all standing like little Roman soldiers, and I fell asleep as the character I fell asleep like that and I woke right. up and they'd all left and it was just me on stage and someone walked by and I said gee Buster which way did they go yeah. and it brought the house down and that laughter yeah. that I heard for the first time a whole auditorium full of laughter laughing at me I was sold nice and it wow. was that moment on that I thought this is what I want to do I yeah. want to be on the stage and make people laugh well see I have um, it's the emotion that you got from that, I sort of have the same sort of thing. And without going too deep, basically, when I, when I was younger, um, I, I think that, I say I'm not going to go too deep, but it is pretty deep. But I didn't have a particularly great relationship with my stepdad. I was like fighting for attention and things like that. And um, he didn't really treat us very well as kids. So in school, I was just like the class clown. You know, yeah. all I wanted to do is to yeah. make people laugh. And then, yeah. of course my nickname became G like Jim Carrey. Yeah, oh, because right. I just used to int uh, yeah, just act like him all the time. Okay, cool. Um, and then also Lee Evans, yes, which I know that you've worked, I worked with. him too. So, uh, Lee Evans, well, you know, Lee Evans. You, I tended to just pick up on different traits and, you, you know, different things like that and just molded me. And I used to get uh, my mum and my brother and sister, I used to say, right, right, sit down, sit down. And I used to get like chairs all by the all by the lounge. I used to act in front of them and stuff. It was something that I always wanted to be because it made me feel so good hearing people laugh and 
you know, it's, it's, it's a drug. Yeah, yeah, it and, really is. And, and this is why um, I think my YouTube channel has just grown as well, is because I've got that passion. And I just love making people laugh and yeah. entertaining. So, but the reason I say about Taunton is because I used to live in uh, Bridgewater. Oh, really? It was yeah. so close, isn't it? Yeah. Like that. yeah. So um, when my mum and dad um, uh, got divorced, I moved when I was three years old. I moved to Bridgewater, so I used to go to Taunton quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, when I was seventeen, I moved back mm. to Newquay. Yeah. But that was when I saw that, I Googled it. I was like, what, really? Yeah, yeah I saw that as well, yeah. You did, yeah. Well, what was interesting about it, my best friend, who, who uh, I was at school, who was a Welsh guy called Christopher Munker. Right. And we were, uh, we were best friends. He joined the school when he was about 15, 16. And years later, he directed me in a film called The Englishman Went Up and Hill and Came Down the Mountain, which he wrote. No way. Uh, really? We were best friends, and so we, we, we did that together. Wow. wow. How so that was that? pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. And talking about, you know, you just drop in a few, um, I've, I've just wrote some of these um, people that, again, this is from Google, and I've, I've had to double check on some of them. You've worked with people like Hugh Grant, Courtney Cox, Tom Hiddleston, Colin Firth, Lee Evans, Sir Patrick Stewart, Cameron Diaz, Tom Cruise... <laughs> They're just casually chilling Top out with Tom too. Cruise. Top Gun 2 soon. You know, very coming soon. To that. Judy Dench, Sir Anthony Hopkins. No way. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. Ja <laughs> You'll be careful, yeah. mate. <laughs> yeah, was that no, a one-on-one -on -one fight? Tell you was what, it? I mean, I pinch myself sometimes. It's really cool. Yeah. Yes. Do, you remember, mean, do, you remember, do you wake up in the morning and just go, holy shit, I'm Ian McNeese. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I have to say, I wish my partner, who's not too far away from me here, would have the same feeling, but she goes, oh, no, not Ian McNeese. So, so that's, the, you know, <laughs> that's the gig I have, right. Um, the, there's one on here as well. I just thought, I, I'm I was trying to find which film, or yep. Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, no, you got me there. No, no, um, he's not. he's not on the list. Oh right, okay. I did think list. that no, it just no, it popped no. up. You've worked with Arnold. No, it wasn't popped it? up. No, uh, and neither Courtney Cox. Courtney Cox was in the first Ace Ventura. Ah, oh, so that's right. where that's that. Uh, okay. But all the others are right. You you were absolutely fantastic in uh, Ace Ventura too. Well, I had such a good time, quite frankly, because I mean I, I mean the guy's a legend, and um, I, I mean we'd we'd have so much fun on the set because he does make everybody laugh and yeah. trying to. Trying to keep a straight face is phenomenal. And he had a little name for me because, I mean, he would do this. I was lucky because uh, um, I didn't tread on what he did because there was no script. I mean, right. he improvised every day. It was all it was all on the day. I would imagine, yeah. And so he would do a little rip or something. And I, I, I thought to myself, no, I just, just hang on, just wait till I think he's finished and then I'll come in with my line. Right. And so at the end of the movie, he signed a little note for me saying, great. If I was only gay, I'd love you. <laughs> <laughs> and he went banks like that. Reaction Jackson McNeese. So he, that's what he called me, Reaction, Reaction Jack. Jackson. Yeah. Because I reacted in the right way to all his funny gigs, yeah. which is great. Yeah. I just remember that part <coughs> where um, you looked at him and you were like, Chicago. Yes. <laughs> Chicago. I know, I know. Yeah. You know what's really great is, I mean, how long ago is that? 1995 years ago. Is it? And kids will still come up to me. Kids will go Chicago. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, which is really sweet because they're what eight or nine, and yeah. even they're born when we made it. Well, that's all about. I, I think that's the um, you know the the mums and the dads saying you've got to watch this film. Yeah, you've got to watch this film. Yeah, you know, it's a legendary film. It's, yeah. 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 yeah, it's up there, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I was going to ask as well um, because obviously you've you are clearly you're in Doc Martin, which yeah. is uh, season ten now, right? Season ten. That's right. Yeah. And I hear through the grapevine, this is going to be the last one, isn't That's it? That's the final one, absolutely for real. I mean, people say, is it really going to be the last one? And it is, yeah. Yeah. I think what's happened is that the producers uh, realize that um, they've gone everywhere they can with the storylines. And I think they they plugged that will they, won't they, for so many times now with Louisa and the doc. So I think, I think they've reached the point. And Martin also wants to end on a high, as opposed to letting it drift and get not so good. It still plays to nine million people, so it's like wow. it's incredible. It's I mean, massive. It really is, yeah. It started in two thousand and four. That's right. Yeah. That's mad. I remember seeing the first episode of that. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ben's wow, wow, wow. Ben's memory's amazing. 
Is it? My yeah. memory's terrible. He always tells me stuff that we, and he's like, remember? I was like, and I, I can't remember. Your memory is amazing, especially I, about films. It, it, films, Films, yeah. you like, yeah. you know, I don't but know not, how you do not it. anything else. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, like music, no. It's always films. I'm, it's always films, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, sentences and phrases. So could you be an actor yourself? I would love to be. I mean, have you ever done any acting at I've, all? I've never s ventured into that, no. Um, it's something, like I say, it's something that I wanted to do as a child. And still to this day, if ever I got an opportunity, I would, I would do it, you know? Um, right. And the, the thing is, I was going to ask you as well, because obviously you're doing a, a series and then you've been to Hollywood and all this. Sort of, what's, the, what's the main difference, do you think, between movie making you know, the high-end AAA, you know, uh, blockbuster movies and your, well, Doc Martin series. It's time. It's yeah. time because what happens with television is very quick. I mean, you do probably about, um, with, with Doc Martin, you're doing about four or five pages a day. With movies, you're doing maybe one and a half pages. I mean, it takes so long. All the lighting setups take yeah. so long to do and so... Because it's on a big screen, <coughs> all, the, all, all the lighting has to be, uh, 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 it takes such a long time to put everything around. <coughs> so, um, yeah, so it's the time. And uh, what was funny on Jim Carrey's set was that um, it would take about two hours to, to turn around. Yeah. You'd do everything one way, then you'd come around the other way, and it would take about two hours. See, most people go back to their trailers. Okay. And have a cup of coffee or they read the magazine or something like that. Jim Carrey would stay on the set. Right. And entertain all the people that were wow. working. No wow. way. He'd be doing Proper funny joke, walks, yeah. he'd be doing jokes, he'd be playing musical instruments. Yeah. He never stopped. He was on it for 24 hours a day. Wow. And, and you know. Because he's, um, he's gone what people call woke now, hasn't he? He's really, he's just, obviously he, he was this, Basically, it's jumping bean, wasn't he? Yeah. Constantly, all the time. Yeah. And then um, the last few years, he's sort of grown this beard, and he's very much more calm. I think because I used to uh, watch a few of his interviews, and he said basically, I was morphed into a character that people wanted to see, you know. Um, and then afterwards, he's just like, you know what? It's not me. I, I, so now he's he says he's just trying to be himself. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. And. Um, he uh, he obviously mentioned something about uh, the the Will Smith smack. Yes, he did, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he said. He um, said he weren't. He wasn't happy with um, the audience and with with Will Smith and with Will Smith himself. I mean, obviously, yeah. But the Academy too, the way that they handled it on the night, he wasn't happy with that. I don't believe. No, no, no not at all. That's what I hear. But uh, what I was going to ask you about that as well is because th there's one thing that he said, which I thought was actually really quite, I don't know whether it's true, but it was his opinion and I sort of respected that. Um, and I, I did, I understood what he meant. He said, we're not the cool guys anymore. We're not the cool gang. Referring to the Hollywood superstars. Oh, right. Yeah, because if you, uh, and when he was saying that, I remember seeing this collage of movies and things like that, and you had all of these legends on the red carpet yep. and, yep. you know, um, the legends that you've been working with. And uh, and he said, well, back in the day, there's like the 80s and the 90s where the superheroes were there and, you know, the action heroes and the great love stories and things like that. And now it seems to be a little bit of a... Yeah, well, he just said, we're not the cool guys anymore because if, if somebody can get away with slapping somebody live in front of millions of people, you know, and it's accepted, um, you know, the, the world's changed because that's, that would... That's really interesting. It never would have happened yeah. years ago. Yeah, because they're untouchable. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but now they're not. That's right. Yeah. I didn't agree with it. No. No, not no. at all. I think he should have just been taken away and he shouldn't have got his award but, if it was uh, genuine, yeah. if it wasn't staged. Yeah, no, I don't think no. it was staged, but it wasn't staged. No, no it was no. for real. No, yeah. uh, the the backlash of that be you know if you to, to stage that the backlash for yeah, I know. for yeah. him. But there was that conspiracy like, oh, is it staged? And you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think to be fair, it might have looked staged because it was a bloody good slap. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. you know. Um, 
I was gutted because I really like Will Smith. But the thing I had a lot is, of respect for Will Smith. I thought he was like he's always humble. And also, he was wonderful in that movie. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen that movie. Oh, oh that's it, it, that's the Fresh Prince movie, right? No, 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 no the one that he's recently done, the one that he won the award for, which, which was about called. the tennis players. The girls. Oh, right. No, I didn't. I you didn't, haven't seen that. No, I haven't no. seen that. No, I forgot what it's called. Can you remember what it's called? Ian? I can't remember. King Richard. King, King I knew Richard. it had King in it. You're, you're itching now, aren't you, Cindy? Cindy, thanks, Cindy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a big tennis uh, fan anyway. So, oh, so yeah? She knows it. Right. Yeah. But no, I, I think, I mean, if I just put my tuppence in, um, I think there's always two sides to every story. I think that throughout history, Will Smith has done so much greatness in movies and mm. for people and things like that. And I think that, you know, behind closed doors, if he's going through what a lot of people say, that, you know, the stress and the, with his marriage, um, people do some crazy stuff. Yeah, they do. You know, yeah, people yeah. can do some really crazy stuff when you feel like you're in that sort of corner yeah. and yeah. there's no other way. And yeah. I bet you now, if he could turn back time, well, he, would, he wouldn't do it. Oh, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I've got this, uh, I've got it over here as well. Um, oh, to talk about that, actually, you've, you've been on the red carpet. Yeah. A few times. A few times, yeah. What's it like? It's well, well it's really cool. I, I mean, it's it's uh, what was what was really nice on the on the movie I went to uh, for Valkyrie. Yeah. I took my daughter to that, uh, and a friend of hers called Daisy, and um, uh, and I thought to myself, you know, we're going to arrive at the red carpet, and you've got to walk in, and of course they're going to want to speak to all the other stars and all the rest of it. And as we got out of the car, I just hit the red carpet, and suddenly there was Ian, Ian, Ian. And there was a batch of about four or five people with big posters and stuff that wanted me to sign yeah. and stuff like that. And I was thrilled because I thought, my God, it's actually happened. I've been on the red carpet, and someone knows who I am, which was really <laughs> yeah. sweet. So got, and my kids were just, you know, loved it, which was really nice. Do you, I mean... I suppose because you've you've been in movies and you know the television for so many years, you you may have you may have forgotten. But can you remember the first time you actually had it was a proper job of a proper movie, cameras on you? How how what was going through your mind? Because obviously you must have been sitting in your trailer or at home looking over the lines going over and sure, over the sure. big days about to come. Yeah. I've got to sleep. I've got to do this. Yeah, yeah. You know the first ever time. What was that like? to stand in front of these cameras and people going, okay, lights, camera, action, yeah. go, Ian. Well, it was, thing is, is uh, I mean, I mean, I remember the, the, the first movie I ever made, right, was a movie called Top Secret. And Top Secret was directed by the Zucker Brothers and they had a big success with a movie called Airplane. Oh, Airplane, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Airplane. Phenomenal. Yeah, Absolutely yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. I haven't seen Top, Top Secret. Well, Top Secret had uh, Val Kilmer in it. Oh, right, right, yeah. It's another great movie. It's a big spoof movie, too, like Airplane and all the rest. Oh, okay, I'll have a look for that. Uh, and, uh, and I knew that um, this was my first big movie to, to make. Uh, 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 and, and I had this scene where I had to play a um, spy, but I was a novelty seller. It was, it was like, uh, I, mean, I had a little tray of all those little bits and pieces of exploding cigars and all the rest of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was just as a sort of sidetrack because I was really a spy. Uh, and the first time I, I had two, two nights, I had one night where I turned up to do one scene and then I had the big scene the next day. So I turned up for the scene the night where I knew I was going to get shot. It was just going to be me and all the rest of it. So I said to somebody, look, I said, look, this part, who's going to be playing the other part when I come in tomorrow? And they said, well, that's Omar. And I went, Omar? Omar Sharif. And I said, you're joking. No, no, no. Who is playing this yeah. part that yeah. I'm going to be with you? It's Omar Sharif. I bet your heart just went badum. And my heart went badum, 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 badum. And I turned up, and it's Omar Sharif. There I am. The two of us are going to play this scene together where he comes up and he asks me various questions. And because... Uh, someone walks behind us. I have to say, look at the tricks and run. So I give him an exploding cigar. It explodes in his face and all yeah. this, all this sort of bits and pieces. And he gets more and more pissed off. And eventually, I walk off, and he picks something up and goes, "Here, here's your phony <laughs> dog poo." And I go, "What phony dog poo?" <laughs> so, yeah, so that's the, and that's what's really sweet about it. It's become a really cult film. So a lot of people 
we'll say what funny dog boo or something like or, or, or you know they'll say some of the lines from the show but that was huge for me to actually do that scene yeah with someone of his stature <laughs> I can remember it was at Pinewood Film Studios and the first assistant director said oh we booked a table for you and Mr. Sharif in the restaurant at one o'clock and we go oh okay so I turn up <laughs> I go and there's a carvery right okay so yeah. I get all my bits and pieces on like a huge plate of food yeah sit down at the table He's got a little green salad in front of him. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. No, no. Because I learned later that he's a gourmet. He only eats in the evening. He doesn't oh, eat Oh, right. It. Okay. But I was saved because the whole of Pinewood came to the table to say, how are you, Omar? How are... Right. So I got away with it because, you know, I, I could sort of s s sidetrack myself without having to talk to him because he was talking to everybody else. So yeah, it was yeah. a big... It was a big start. Big do, you ever, start. do you ever get nervous now? Oh, of course. Do absolutely. you still, yeah? I always feel, and a lot of actors feel the same way, unless you get nervous, something's not quite right. Right. So little you, butterflies. You I have think, to have you know? that adrenaline to, to just make it edgy. To, yeah. To put you on the right, you know. Otherwise, it's too relaxed. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there any... Is there any films in the future that, I mean, after Doc Martin, I mean, what are you going to be doing after that? Are you going to be wanting to go into more films, any particular genre you know, that you'd like to get is, into? Is, is, I, mean, I mean, I'm I'm so lucky with the fact, I mean, just before I did Doc Martin, right, I got a, um, uh, what happens with uh, stuff, trying to get stuff now is they'll say, the agent will send you some some lines in a script and then you, you have to record them yeah. and send them off. You don't meet anybody anymore. Oh, right? okay, right. So what you have at home is your little iPhone yeah, yeah. and your partner, say Cindy, will, will read the other lines to you and then you, you, you do that. So it's an audition. Yeah. And you send it off. And I did one of these recently, right, okay. I bet that's a lot easier now than it was back in the day when you actually, oh. you know, So you'd one have take. to go into London, you'd have to go into, you know, in, into the casting people, you'd have to, you know. Yeah. So that's all gone now, really. You just send something in. And with this one, I mean, I didn't know quite what it was. So um, I sent it off and um, my agent rang back and said, they love it. They, they think it's great. It's with Apple. They're going to um, look at it and see. They're going to green light it. If they're going to check with the director and all the rest of it. And, uh, but it looks likely that you're going to get the role. And the role was Louis the Eighteenth in the film about Napoleon. Cameo, just a few, yeah. few little scenes. So I went, oh, that's great, okay. And so they rang back and they said, yep, it's on. They want you to do it. I said, okay. And the director, Ridley Scott. And I went, oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> that's just insane. There's, Ridley there's Scott. A, to me, there are a handful of directors. And I've been very fortunate to work with some of them. Milos Foreman, who is, I think, uh, you know, the one flew of the cooker's nest. I mean, oh, fantastic right. yeah, director. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know work with him, you know, uh, Brian Singer in the days when he was, you know, a good boy. So there's him, <laughs> you know. And now there's Ridley Scott, and I think to myself, like, Christ, you know. So that was that was a huge gig to actually work with him on yeah. that set. Because to me, he's one of the the legends, total legends. Yeah, legend, absolutely, you know? absolutely. Yeah. What would you say is, um, <coughs> do, you, do you consider that all the films and all the things you've done as your, your, your babies? My baby. Yeah, <laughs> like you, like you have, like you have. Um, yes, yes, it's like you, you have your mark on them, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, each, each and every one, you love in a different way. Yes. Or, but yeah. you, you did say actually, you've forgotten a lot of the things you've, you've done, oh, right? Of course, no, but no, I've forgotten a lot of the children I've had as well. <laughs> but uh, no, here's one here. What <laughs> <laughs> me? He, no, not you. <laughs> He might be the same height as a child. Yeah, right. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Yes, here's, here's what I made earlier. Recently. Yes, <laughs> earlier. Yeah, no. Yes, no babies they are. It's true, yeah. Yeah. And what, what would you say, uh, do you have a film where you're most proud of? Conspiracy or, is one of the ones that I'm really proud of. And a conspiracy was an extraordinary thing because it was it was um, absolutely true story about a conference that took place in Berlin called the Wannsee Conference in which about 15 people sat around a table and they discussed the Jewish question during the war. Said at the end of the war, about 1945, 44, and uh, it had these people called 
Eichmann, Himmler, who was sitting at the table uh, and all the rest of it. And one was played by Kenneth Branagh, another played Stanley Tucci, Colin Firth was in the room as well. And this was an extraordinary piece of work because it really was a transcript of what happened about what these people were deciding to do with the Jews. Right. And at the beginning, he said, look, we were thinking about what well, there's camps to put them in, they can build roads, they can do this, uh, we can castrate some of them so they wouldn't have children anymore. Talking all like this, all about yeah. the Jews. And eventually, um, um, Eichmann decided, he said, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna tell you what we are gonna do. Because we built these trucks and you can gas them. You can gas up to 20 of them in a truck and when they come out, they look pink. And oh this was God. all done while everybody's eating fine wines and food yeah, and all the rest yeah. of it. And they're discussing what to do with the Jews. And then they say, we're going to build these camps. And all of you are going to have something to do with it. And I, 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 my character was called Klopfer, and he was deciding what to do with the food for the camps. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And just all these people. And, uh, and he said, now I want you to burn all the notes that you made, all the transcripts. And there was one, one transcript that had been kept. Mm. in a briefcase that was found and used for the story of the film. Wow. Right. And it was word for word what they decided really? to do. Really? Absolutely. So that was really great. I mean, to actually make something that, you know... Impactful, impact, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I did actually see a, a clip of that uh, last night, um, you and Colin Firth going back and forth, oh, back and forth. Oh, that's wonderful. It was I really will remember you. Yeah. That's very chilling where, where a club returns to him and yeah. goes, I will remember you. There's a lot of views on that yeah. there as well. Oh, I can't yeah. remember the top of my head, but I remember seeing a lot of views on there. Yeah. Yeah. No, great story. Great story. Yeah. And Branner, it's one of the best things he's ever done. Yeah. He was phenomenal. We had six pages of dialogue uh, in one go, in one go. Right. And with the cameras, because we weren't moving. We were sitting around a table, so the cameras were on you. And he was word perfect for six pages. And had so much dialogue. Really? Phenomenal. Just amazing. That must be tough, you know, yeah. when you talk about, um, you know, a lot of dialogue and that. That must because, be tough to yeah. to remember if you've got a, a, a long script. I'll tell go. you a funny thing about Branagh, right? Okay, so years ago, I j when I just left drama school and I was starting out and all the rest of it, doing, and I'd done a bit of theatre and then I decided I must try and do a bit of TV now. So my agent rings me and says, look, he said, uh, if somebody wants to ring you, um, there's a man called Kenneth Branagh. But he's doing a play at the, uh, at the Lyric Hammersmith. Now. Is it okay if he calls you? So I get this phone call from Branagh. Unknown. He's not known by his And he says, hi, Ian. Uh, look, I'd love you to be in a play that I'm going to direct it. I'm going to do, I'm playing Romeo. It's Romeo and Juliet. And I'd love you to play Mercutio and the Friar. And I went, oh, my God, hang on. Because the two parts together, you're never off the stage. And the only way that you could distinguish between the two is to have a, a hood as a friar and oh, the other okay. as, as Mercutio. And I think to myself, God, that's a lot of work. And I said, and how much is it? It's 150 quid a week. It's a lyric hammersmith. So I go, okay, okay, well, you know, you know I'm going to have to say no. I'm sorry. Mm. So I turned it down you know, yeah. because I, I knew I had to start. I had just had kids and I had to earn money for the, you know, the family. So I turned yeah. that down. Go forward a few years, okay, and my agent rings up and said, oh, you've had an offer. I said, what's that? He said, well, it's for Kenneth Brown. It's, it's at the Riverside Studios uh, where he's doing um, a Twelfth Night. Paul McCartney's doing the music, and he wants you to play um, Toby Belch. I said, oh, great. That's great. Uh, how much? 150 quid a week. <laughs> <laughs> I go, you know what? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no. <laughs> now, if I'd said yes to one of these, I would have been in every Branner movie yeah. he's ever done because he is so loyal. Right. Right, okay. Yeah. And I said no. No. Do you regret and it was that? On the, oh, of course I regret it. But on the day, on the first day of conspiracy, yeah. when he looked at me and I looked at him, he just went, Hi. <laughs> Got ya. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was a very interesting uh, time. That yeah. Was... You said about, you know, your, your theatre and that. Because um, it's, at the end of the day, it's all acting, but I suppose it's all so different, right? The theatre. Of course, yeah. Um, every single marker, 
every, can, am I right in thinking that when you do theatre, it's the same show continuously week after week? Absolutely, uh, yeah. absolutely. There's no change because you rehearse the play and that's what you do every night. And, and uh, yes, yeah. Uh, and some and sometimes for years. I, I mean, wow. At the RSC, when I worked there, I, I mean, you, you'd be doing in repertoire, so you weren't doing the whole thing. Each, you, you weren't doing the same thing each night. But you'd be doing plays for a year. Yeah, I would imagine one of the most difficult things about that would be, you know, obviously the first few times you've got the passion, you've got the, you know, the loudness, and you've got to love, you've, you've got to love what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. and then absolutely yeah. after the first, after the you know first month goes by, you'd be like, yeah, yeah. you know the the feel of it, that you've got to keep it going, haven't you? And then what happens is that someone like Judy Dench will have games with you. So there's, say, so there's a very famous thing that she did with Macbeth, right? which was she said, okay, I want everybody to, um, they have to have a red dot on their face or somewhere about them that you have to see. And so they put them on the ears right. and when they walked on stage. She would have to look for the red dot, you know, <laughs> to, just to keep her mind going. All oh, okay. It. And this one person uh, was talking to her and eventually went, and it was on the track. <laughs> oh, yeah. And she laughed out loud. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. So that, that's Brilliant. what I mean about funny time. Where yeah. did she put your dot in? <laughs> 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 exactly. Yeah, that's good. Um, uh, uh, do you have any sort of things that you do before you <coughs> go on stage or anything? Oh, like I'm that? a total and utter, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the whole yeah? thing. You've been wearing be the same pants for way. 30 years. She absolutely had <laughs> lucky pants, all the rest of it. No, no there's, a whole, there's a whole ritual that, that goes through getting dressed in the same way, getting yeah. this, you know, going through voice exercises, leaving the... Because you've got a tiny system where it tells you that it's time for you to go to the stage. So you wait for that, and then you go out at a certain point. You reach... Absolutely, it's always done in, in a... In a, a line quite superstitious, you know, yeah? T totally superstitious, yeah. Yeah? Have you ever broken one of those rituals? Oh. And, and, and then being on, when the camera says action, you're like, I haven't put my socks on back to front. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, there must have been, there must have been. But things happen, there's so, so many strange things happen. Like, like I, did a, I did a play recently at the Globe in London, which is this wonderful Shakespeare theatre, which is open to the air, uh, and you've got people around. I did, it was Cardinal Woolsey in a play about Henry VIII, and, I, uh, uh, and at one point he has this really sort of uh, heart-rendering soliloquy uh, where he talks about his doom and gloom because he's fucked up. But, uh, uh, well, he's, he's been a bad boy, to <laughs> say yeah. that. And so um, I, I'm standing in the middle of the theatre because there's a gantry that goes out from the main stage, 1,500 people, and you, you can hear a pin drop as you're go through the soliloquy and suddenly this titter starts to happen. People start to laugh and I'm a little nervous about what it is. And I, I turn around and I see on the stage, on the chair, there's a blackbird yeah. that has flown in from above, on a blackbird. And I turn around uh, and the audience are, are loving this because the blackbird is looking at me, I'm looking at the blackbird, yeah. it's like my doom. There's <laughs> the blackbird of doom and all that stuff. <laughs> and so I go up to the stage and it flies up into the rafters. Big round of applause from the audience as yeah. the bird has gone up. And I realized it's not like it's looking at a pork pie on the table. Oh, right. <laughs> but it was, it was a magical moment that, that, that me and this bird were just looking at each other uh, uh, for quite some time. Amazing. It was great. What, what sort of stuff did you do in um, the, my, my imagination? When, when someone says I, I went to um, drama school, yeah. I think of somebody saying, right. Or being a tree or something yeah, like that. Be, yeah. Now impersonate a headache in the <laughs> sound and yes. and you're like you yes. know all these people doing like yeah. these weird things do you do that yes no no <laughs> i know exactly what you mean yes there's a little bit of that but at the same time i mean you have all sorts of lessons about vocal exercises uh, i mean i still do these exercises i i, I learned at, at drama school to actually make you, uh, <laughs> you know, Try and get your tongue loosened up in, yeah. in order so so you can speak better, which drives Cindy crazy when I when I um, <laughs> go through all that noises and she imitates them in the back too. What what what, what what come on what what, okay, what do you do so what do you do? <laughs> eh? well, Sorry, Cindy, I'm gonna have to do it. Fingers, you want to see some tongue action from me? Yeah. Well, uh, well, well, the tongue action is this: is that you say Peter Piper to 
which I have a tongue out at the same time. Pick the piper, pick the peck of pepper. 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 Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. It helps it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, well done. It helps, it helps. So, so that's that. I mean, there's crap like that. Yeah. So it's lots of voice, voice actors like that. that. Then there's movement classes. I was always at the back, so they couldn't see me what I was doing <laughs> because I hated that so much. I didn't want to do that. So no. Movement classes. Or so. But <clears> then you had, um, in the early days, right, they'd had someone come in from the the BBC drama department right. to come and talk to you about working on television before you had videos. Oh, so right, there's yeah, nothing yeah. in the room. There's just this man talking about working on TV. Yeah. And so, so I always remember what he said, which is this. Now, when you think on camera, turn your eyes in a triangle. <laughs> <laughs> For real. It's so true. And he was absolutely oh for real. <laughs> I'm going to remember that one. I know. I'll I'm thinking. Well, I've remembered that ever since. Think with your eyes and a Ian, can you uh, just express that you're thinking, please? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's it. There you yeah. go. I know. Very funny. Oh, God. And um, do, you, do you think that... I think some people have a natural ability to act. But do you, <coughs> how much do you think it, it, uh, acting school is necessary to... Oh, it's so necessary. Yeah. I will say this. I mean, I'm just going to have a little cough for a minute. Mm. It, is so, it is so true, mate, because, like, there's so much respect for actors because they have to think about moving their eyes in a triangle while still <laughs> acting, you know? Yeah. If it was me, I don't they'd be like, I don't cut, cut, <coughs> cut. Oh, Mace is, Chris has messed it up again, you know? Yeah, I think constant. I don't, I don't think... Ian would have done that though. In, in, I, I don't think I think you took that with a pinch of salt, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. The, the, the thing about it is, is, is that people, a lot of people in the past have contacted me about their children who, who want to become actors, and I will say the same thing to them: go to drama school, right? Because it'll give you a terrific grounding for what you want to do. Yeah. All that funny stuff about you know, sort of be a mouse, be this, be that. That's fine. You get a chance of actually putting productions on. Mm. You get agents coming to see them. Uh, um, you get work with other people, and, and improvisation too, because that's one of the things that I loved about drama school. Because I have a knack for improvisation, right? Uh, which is you, you don't have a script. You have to come in, and someone will tell you, "Okay, walk into this room, and, and it's, it's your wife. She's just come in. She's crying. There's a reason for that. You have to find out what it is, and so go." Yeah. And so the two of you will work on that. Uh, yeah. That's great fun. I, w I would imagine improvisation would be good for, you know, raw emotion yeah. instead yes. of, you know, quite yeah. strategic. This is what you need to do, X, Y, Z. A film I did called Nativity 2, which was, yeah. yeah. My yeah. kids love that film. That's so good. My kids love Nativity films. Now that is all improvised. Is it? Is it really? That's Both, amazing. All those films, I think there have been three in now, three yeah. or four. They were all improvised. Amazing. That, 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 that's what the director wanted. Yeah. That on the day when we actually filmed them, that was us improvising. What was his decision, do you know, what, of, of to go just purely down the improvisation route? I think she just liked that idea. And she just worked. She liked what people could, could do with it. And, yeah. and in fact, I think she chose people in audition. We had to go in and we had to improvise in front of her. And I think she picked people that, that she thought, oh, because not everybody can do that, so, mm. so it, it, she picked a whole a good bunch of people that could do it. Yeah, I have to ask um, one of my f most famous actors uh, that I absolutely adore is Michael Keaton, and you worked with yeah. him on White Noise. Yeah, didn't you? I know, and what a joy that was. Oh my, what was he like actually? Was absolutely, did, I mean, did he you go, could, I'm could not have been. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, uh, so did he say, I'm Batman? Yes, I know. No. Do you know what? I mean, he is. What is so strange is for someone who. I, I mean, this is. I, I worked with him before he had that huge comeback with uh, Birdman. Do you see Birdman? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Birdman. And since yeah. then, he's just lifted off. I mean, he's done yeah. so many good movies. Since Pacific Heights. Have you seen that film? Oh, I thought that was um, wonderful, too. Amazing, yeah. But, but when we were doing White Noise, he, he was in what I consider in the doldrums because okay. he hadn't done much uh, for a while. And so, but it wasn't until Birdman that he 
shot back up into everybody's presence as well. So when we were working on White Noise, he was very quiet. Really? He was very quiet and very... Um, you just saying that because of White Noise? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> present, but, but just very reserved. Right. Um, uh, certainly n n not an extrovert. Okay. Uh, was was qu very quiet on set, and uh, and so yeah. Wow, because he uh, he, he did stand up comedy, right? Yeah. Y you would yeah. you would imagine but, it but, totally but, opposite, but, wouldn't you? But whether he was going through some traumatic experience at the time, or w whether he was, you know, whether his marriage wasn't going very well, or I don't know. But during that whole period that we shot that film, he was very quiet and very. It was it was a quiet set. Very quiet reserve set, but yeah. very quiet time. Yeah. Is there much difference between uh, making a movie in America and in the UK? There is, yeah. Is there? And the big Money. difference is no, it's, it's, it's called craft services. <laughs> and I'll tell you what this is, right, okay, because they have the most wonderful snacks. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> they, <laughs> they will have truckloads really? of wonderful things for you to go and get milkshakes, burgers, whatever you want during the day, as well as the catering that they have, you know, for breakfast. And there are these trucks. That's one good thing about America services. is food. And, yeah. and, you know, yeah. and, and, and I was in heaven. When I was making Ace Ventura, right, okay, this guy would come up and say, you want a Coke float? And I didn't know what a Coke float was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Coca-Cola with ice cream in it. And it's a hot day. You want one? I said, I want three. Come on. <laughs> <back there." laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he was he was wonderful. Do you remember his name? Louis Louis. Louis Louis. He was called Louis Louis. Louis and Louis, 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 Louis for me was the man from heaven because his <laughs> truck was just. And my kids that came over oh, to yeah, watch the show, and, uh, and and they knocked on the trailer. Jim Carrey's. And he opened the. What is it? The va the Von Trapp children? What? <laughs> <laughs> few of them there, you know. Which was it's your gag as well. I remember, but. But, uh, but but he too. But but no no. I mean Louis Louis was phenomenal, just phenomenal. Uh, but in England, you're lucky if you get a biscuit. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. really. Like, you know, yeah, they have ugh, on the set of Doc Martin. There's soup in the morning. They bring a bit of soup, and there's in the afternoon they might bring a sandwich or something like that. There's catering, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Well. But that's what I mean about craft services. No so, coke yeah. floats. No coke floats. No coke floats. And of course, you know, I mean, so, so that is. I'm being facetious about yeah. that, but the other difference is obviously money. Yeah, they have so much more money to uh, and so much more time to to mm. make these films. Right. Yeah. So it's basically like a, a tight budget. Yep. I, I say not a tight budget, but you need to be on the money every single. You do. You do. Whereas in America, uh, I mean, certainly, uh, maybe things are changing now with Netflix and all this because all the big studios are now having to pay. Lip service to all these Amazons. And this is what I, I I came up with a question yesterday. It was about Netflix and Amazon. And do you think it's like having a detrimental effect on the film in industry? I don't think so because no. what they're doing is there's so much more work. Yeah, but is it more is it more rushed work or you know I seem to it's like for example Adam Sandler. Yeah. I used to love Adam Sandler, but yeah. now he seems to be... Wedding singer. She did yeah. the wedding singer. Oh, you did the amazing. wedding singer. Oh, my, oh singer. my God. I love that song that he sings to her on the plane. That's amazing. Um, Cindy, we're going to have to get you on, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, she'll have to put the camera on her at some yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. you will do. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll have to have <laughs> you back. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, Adam Sandler seems to be in a lot of Netflix stuff now. And I think it's, it's almost overdone. Yeah. You know? That's why. That's why I thought about it. I, yeah. I just. I, I don't know. I think um, he's great, but he just seems every other. There seems to be a hell of a lot of films I don't think that he's it, been I, in, and yeah. it's like see, every every few months there's another one. And I don't know. I think that. Are uh, you big fans of Marvel? Oh, absolutely. Ben yeah, is. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. a superhero fan, but nowhere near yeah, as yeah. much as Ben. Yeah, yeah. Marvel and DC. Yeah. yeah. Love it. But um, I, I think with Netflix, I think it's more the case of. I think every actor has that, you know, 
it's like anything. It's like with my your YouTube channel. Sometimes one month the views will go up and then they'll go down and they'll go up and really high and mm. then they'll start dropping. It's like I think people have acted. You know, he might just be in this bubble at the moment of where the needs there, the the yeah, ideas yeah. are there, and you know, yeah. Six months down the line, you might not see him again for. But another. it takes the um, the specialness. That it takes that away from it for me. With yeah, Adam Sandler. Yeah. You know, I used to love watching his movies, but now he seems to be in everything. It just takes that. Ec- it doesn't seem special anymore. Right. Yeah. You know? Sometimes less is more. But Netflix, there's there's a need for it, and people don't have as much time these days, do they? You no. Know? I tell you what, um, Netflix. I th- I think Netflix is great. I I've loved Netflix and the budget they must have for for movies. Mm. But they is, do. It is huge. Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, but they just put their prices up, haven't they? Yeah, Netflix. I mean, I, I just, I think that, you know, the movie industry, I think it just evolves, right? It just, you know, it, has it, to, it, it, it used to be television that we watched. Now it's now it's more of a streaming service. And a lot of it's YouTube. Mm. And, you know, I think, and then it was VHS and then DVDs, Blu-rays. And now they're sort of becoming obsolete because you can just stream these things now. So it's just an easy, convenient way, I, I suppose. And you think also the the money they're saving hmm. not doing all the videos yeah, and yeah. the DVDs and yeah, all that course, sort of yeah. stuff you know it's just all on digital what about live stuff Ian have you ever done anything live I know oh, theatre and yeah, stuff I'm is live but like yes uh, um, well I mean I suppose we recorded for um, for for video um, at the Globe which was Henry the Eighth, so so that was done live. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that was done live. That but must. I be. don't think I've done anything on TV that's been live. No, no. but sometimes like a series will do like a special live they will, lives, yeah, live live one yeah. when they like yeah, EastEnders. Yeah. Oh, the like EastEnders like every Christmas. Version. I think that's great. Yeah, I, I think mean, it's great because you it, get yeah, 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 it's fun. You said about uh, your vocal training that you've done. Have you heard Ian's uh, Churchill? Yes, I have. Yeah, in, do, in, you're, in Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah, it's amazing. That's a. That, you. I mean, first of all, you looked amazing. You look like Churchill, definitely. Properly yeah. looked like, like Churchill, and you sounded just like him as well on Doctor what Who. What do you mean? I sounded like Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're saying to me, boy? Yes. Yeah. You're saying that now. <laughs> yeah, I've got an amazing. Voice. It's great. <laughs> but that must have been so uh, to to. I suppose when you have these different roles that you have to, uh, you know, you get asked to play, when Churchill came up, you must have been like, holy shit. Well, it was quite interesting because what happened, like I said, um, I packed up doing theatre for many years because it, it paid, paid badly. Yeah. And I had kids and I had to, you know, so, but years later, so I got a phone call from my agent saying, you've got an offer. Oh, I said, that's great. It's the National Theatre. I said, well, you know, look, I can't do that. Hang on this, hang on. It's to play Winston Churchill. And I said, really? In a play about Harold Macmillan, Jeremy Irons is going to play Harold Macmillan, and they want you to play Winston Churchill. And I went, you know what? Now is the time to go back into the theatre. So after 17 years, I stood on the stage of the Littleton Theatre, crapping myself on the first preview as Winston Churchill, and thought of myself, and it was, it was, it was... uh, it was a baptism of fire, but then I wished I'd gone back earlier because I had such a good time. And it was the casting people from Doctor Who and the director came to see the Churchill that I did there. Wow. That's how I got offered it on, on Winston, on, on Doctor Who. Do you think a lot of your, your career is a little bit of, uh, and please don't take this as offense, but luck about who, oh, who actually without sees a doubt, you? Without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, luck is a... Luck is a good percentage of, of 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 how we get on in our our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, how I met you. It was funny yeah. actually. When I, that was unbelievable. When you when you rang me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, I was, he rang me straight after he met him because <laughs> we were just starting up the podcast. Mm. Yeah, I was uh, I was um, with the family just walking down Port Isaac, and uh, I saw you outside the shop. And I, at first, I didn't recognise you, but I I, I saw you. I was like. I, I know that face. And then when I heard you speak, I was like, I know, I know, I, I, I know. <laughs> What's that from? And I, I went into the shop that you were sat out. I remember you came back and you yeah. looked me up online or something. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went into the shop and uh, my wife was just 
getting some uh, some bread or something like that. And I was looking around, and I saw your face on all these chocolate bars. I'm like, yes. Of course he's in Doc Martin. Yeah, so that's when I went out and I, I sat yeah, next to yeah, him. He was, yeah. you know, he was just all calm there, collective, and just chilling out in the sun. And um, so we had a little bit of a chit chat, didn't we? And then I walked down, I started Googling. I was like, holy shit. I was like, Nancy, my wife, I said, look, look at this. Look, look who it is. Look at what he's <laughs> been in. Oh my God. And then, um, and then uh, I went down to the, to the bottom, um, just where there's a little bar down the bottom, yeah, an yeah, outside yeah. bar. Yeah. yeah. And the moat. That's right, yeah. And uh, my my wife and her um, mum and dad went off to the, to the loo, and I thought I'd just have a quick pint here. And as I got a pint, I uh, I heard this. Excuse me. I looked to my left, and someone says, "Casper sight." Yeah, so he obviously recognised wow, me. Wow, wow, yeah. that's great. Yeah, and I was like, oh, hello, mate. So I started chatting to him. I was like, oh, my chest was, I was like, yeah, be recognised again, <laughs> you know? And then I walk up to the hill to say, I've got to ask him to go on the podcast. And there's a queue of people literally huddled around wanting a, a, a photograph with you and everything like that. Literally, one after the other. I'm thinking, well, I'm not quite an Ian McNeese yet, but... Uh, that's, no, it's great, though. But yeah, it was... <sighs> What was it feel like? I mean, uh, funny enough, I um I was in True the other day and I was buying some like t-shirts mm. and I went past his butchers and saw him doing mints. And he goes, oh, I know you, Casper. I was watching you last night <laughs> and it feels amazing. But does it uh, does it what's it feel like for you when you get just bombarded over but and over? And tell you what, um, I tell you what, the thing is, I mean, I was in uh, um uh. <coughs> I was coming out of a cinema, uh, a, a, a supermarket once, and this guy comes up and goes, hey! And I go, hello. He said, how are you? And I said, I'm, I'm great, how are you? He said, it's been a long time. And I went, well, well, well how long do you think it's been? It's got to be 10 years. I said, well, where was it? Construction. He thought I was a builder that <laughs> <laughs> years ago. Oh, really? That was one of my favorite ones. Another yeah. one, was this, oh God, he said, you're so good. Said, thank you. He said, no, <laughs> God, that, that series you made, it was fabulous. And I said, thank you so much. I mean, Cracker, I mean, just. <laughs> <laughs> cracker, that was brilliant, yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah. was brilliant. I know, I know. Was it Fitz? No, no, it was, uh, that's right. It was, it was um, Robbie Coltrane. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but that's the yeah. thing, when, somebody, when you recognize somebody and you don't know, like, you can easily get it wrong, can't you? Yeah, you know, no, like when no. you met, you you saw Ian, yeah, yeah. you, you recognised him. Voices, but, yeah. You know, but when the penny dropped, and when I saw when I saw um, Ace Ventura, I was like, oh my god, how did I not? Yeah. just you know, see that straight away because I remember as soon as I saw the um, the Ace Ventura, I remember, and I told you when we sat on the on the bench, the uh, the part where um, Jim Carrey just doing drums on the trees and then yeah. he slaps the back of your leg you're like oh Mr. Ventura <laughs> it's very funny but my legs are getting a little bit raw now yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um do you do like I say asking again but does it get to a point where you just go just leave me alone I really no, want I to the thing is this is I mean I always look I mean I've been very fortunate to, to actually use uh, I mean quite frankly Port Isaac is very special because that's it's where it's made. So people are coming to come down. Mainly people have seen the show, so they'll know who I am. Yeah. In, in London, I can walk in the streets. I don't have any problem. Right. right. People don't know who the fuck I am, so that's great. Yeah. But yeah. Down here, I've taken it to use to my advantage. Right. Which is, I carry a little bucket, and I say to everybody who wants a photograph, put a pound in the bucket for the lifeboats. That's so nice and of I've you to do that. I've been collecting for the uh, you know. RNAI for for years now, and each year I make about two or three thousand pounds. Wow. That's unbelievable! So the total now is about fourteen grand worth of oh, money, that's wow. just by someone having in a photograph of yeah. me. So that's I've used it to that purpose, which yeah. has been great. That's brilliant. Well, what I want to do is um, get that link on this video as well, so in the description, so people can go on there and donate. What, yeah. whatever they like yeah. on, this, on this video that would be yeah. good man yeah it'd be great yeah yeah you were, only, you, you were only saying in the last podcast that we did about giving something back paying forward yeah because you were saying about that about yeah. your success you want to do some good yeah you know and something like even just what we're doing about 
you know, if people can donate to the RNLI through this podcast, that would be yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, because we have a, a bit, but we're right there because we know Nikki Bradbury, who is the pasty shop owner, mm -hmm. uh, who's 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 a legend in her own life uh, for, for for Paul Isaac. She was only out with the lifeboats the other day. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so quickly that these people get get dressed and they're in the boat in two or three minutes and they're out risking their lives. And, yeah. and she's been decorated by you know the Queen up in London. Wow, I mean, you know, so I mean, they're phenomenal. These they people. are unbelievable. They are yeah. all, all for nothing. Uh, it's all for nothing. I yeah. mean, it's all. I work with I somebody who's in the R and L. They're they're um they work for the lifeboat in um, Foy. Yeah, down in Foy. He's a young lad, but they're absolutely brilliant. It is one, unfortunately. It is one of those um, one of those things that can be forgotten because you just naturally think about the air ambulance, maybe, mm. or mm. you know the hospitals and things like that. But it is some, something can be overlooked. So mm. yeah, I think that's yeah. We'll we'll do that definitely. Put the that's great. the link down there. Um, one other thing I was want to say as well because I'm sure that people are watching this now are going to be like you know how do I get into the you know the the industry. Uh, what advice would you give to somebody who just wants to get into acting, wants to be in the movies, wants to be in television? It First, I would say this, which is the thing, it has to be a vocation. You have to really, really want to do it because the rejection you're going to get is going to be huge. Right. Because, you know, for every role that you go up for, there's a good 25 roles that you won't get. Right. So, I mean, my life has been a constant rejection as every actor has been, of trying to get roles that you really wanted and you've not been able to get them. And every now and again, you get one. Yeah. And it's great. And you feel a hundred bucks, you feel a million dollars for, mm. for getting it. So you've really, it's something that you've really got to want to do because you can't, you can't, um, it, it, because of that, you've got to be tough about it and you, you, you have to really want to do it because you are going to have that problem. Um, and, and so, uh, and then the other thing is, is training. Yeah, drama I school. Before, uh, it's imperative that you do a, a proper training. I mean, people get off the, I mean, uh, it, it always strikes me as, as hilarious that somewhere like Los Angeles has got no training. I mean, there, there are no drama schools in Los Angeles, there are no film schools for actors in Los Angeles. What happens? is that someone will get off a Greyhound bus yeah. and they'll become a waiter or something like that and then they'll <coughs> go to uh, these uh, these um, coaches in America, which I think are rip-off people who will have 30, 40 people in a room and they'll go through various classes with them and they cost a fortune. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's how they basically get some form of some form of training about how to work with a camera or how to do, do that. But there's no, uh, I mean, three or four years, you can't, they don't have that, and I think it's imperative that someone does that, that training. And we have brilliant drama schools in, in London and, and also Bristol, Bristol Old Vic, which is a brilliant drama school. Lambda, RADA, Guildhall, Central, these are all excellent schools. I went to Lambda, yeah. as do a lot of people that um, have been there. Is Lambda Benedict in? Cumberbatch, the name but one. So That's yeah. some name. That is a name, Cumberbatch. Yeah, yeah, Cumberbatch. Yeah, Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. I, I've always thought it was Cumberpatch. <laughs> Cumberpatch. I love that. Yeah. What would you say is the the most difficult thing about acting? Um. Oh God, that's an interesting question. I mean, the the difficult thing about acting. I mean, I suppose it's trying to remember, trying to remember what one. That, one of the classic things is to listen. Okay. Is to listen to what the other person is so saying. So what would you say? Exactly. <laughs> because that that should that should listening to what they're asking you or what they're talking about will reflect on how you're going to reply to them. Are so you talking about as you're acting right now? So listening yeah. to what right okay. Yeah. I've heard because that before. It's so it's so easy to be thinking about what's my next line yeah. or what's or thinking about your shopping list or whatever like that while someone's doing a long speech or something like that. Mm. Not been really interested in it, you know. Yeah. But you've got to you've got to pick up on it. You have to listen to what they're saying. Yeah. Because that will colour 
what you're going to say back to mm. them very easily. Maybe. And of course, then you can react to certain yeah. parts yeah. of what they're saying al- along the As say along it, the yeah. path. Yeah. yeah, that's why I couldn't be an actor. Because no. I'd be constantly thinking, what's <laughs> but my next I think line? What's my, next? my eyes would be going in a triangle. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I, but I think yeah. that's the importance of memorizing your lines. Yeah, of course. So it yeah. becomes just. But then fluid. there's that added pressure. You've got to know your lines inside out. You know. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a tough job. Yeah. Massive respect. Have I you, love no. them. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever? Um, how many cuts? What, what's your record of how many <laughs> cuts you've had to do? You know where you got the lines okay, wrong. Okay, I'm going to tell you what happened, right? Okay, I, I mean, I was on the set of uh, Valmore, which was a movie I did with Milos Forman, who I said did One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, who's, who's this uh, Polish director who called me Jan, who was, who was he's a horrible man, yeller, screamer. Oh. Scream at all the actors, scream at all the crew and all that sort of scream at yeah, The power trip. Uh, I, I'm absolutely tricky, tricky individual. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm on the set, there's Colin Firth lying on a bed. I'm his servant called Asalon. And I have to open these curtains. And I have to, and he says to me, where is she? And I have one line. <laughs> and I have to say, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? And, Come on now. <laughs> and I kid you not when I say, 35 takes later and I'm still saying she's gone and I go she's gone she's gone she's gone she's gone <laughs> and he would say things like to me yeah it's so simple what you I'd say you say she's gone <laughs> so I go okay okay so she's gone no it's too big it's too big it's like Hollywood no no you say she's gone okay she's gone no 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 you're acting now you're acting don't act don't act just say She's gone. Okay. <laughs> She's gone. No, it's this bad, 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 bad. It's too oh, bad. I bet you were like, so, "Fuck, you come yeah. here and do it." So I think there was at one point <laughs> where the crew are looking away from what I'm doing because they're so embarrassed, and, I'm, and there's one point where I'm face to face with Milo saying, "I don't know what the fuck you want." Yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm giving you thirty-five fucking takes. Yeah. <laughs> so she that's on location, right? Wow. Three weeks later, we're in the studio. And I noticed someone bringing what I consider to be curtains along, and I go, oh, Christ, they're the same material as the curtains <laughs> on location. Oh, yeah, flashbacks, did you? And we've got a fucking retake. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, she's gone. No. Uh, oh, this God. time, there's no Colin Firth in the bed. There's just the curtains and me oh. opening up. So even the, the 35th studio. time wasn't good enough. Absolutely. There's another 25 takes of she's gone. I kid you not in the fucking studio. <laughs> and at this point, I'm laughing. At this point, I just don't care. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so, so, so the, the next day, the producer of the film comes up to me and says, Ian, we got a bit of a problem because it looks like what we did yesterday with that, that retake you did, it's not gonna cut in with what we got in the movie. So tomorrow, I said, no. I said, you have 35 takes on the set. Yeah, 25 yesterday. No more. Yeah. I do no more. You have it. Yeah. I swear to God, when I watch the fucking movie, it's the first fucking take. <laughs> it's the first, it's the first take. take. I swear. <laughs> no way. I swear. Oh, no. You bet you must be thinking, this is this is a joke. This is oh, I tell you, April I tell Fool's you. or something. I tell you, I tell you. Jeremy Beadle's going to come around the, the corner. Same, it was the same man on the very first take that I ever did. We were outside, Colin Firth arrives on a horse and I have to get up uh, and I have to say something to him. And he told me what he wanted me to do. I get up and you do this and uh, it will be good or it'll be in my movie. <laughs> and It'll be good, if it's good, it'll be in my movie. That's was his phrase. Wow. It'll be in my movie. And you go, oh, okay. I know where I am, okay. Oh, he was a piece of work. Yeah. Did you have to work with a lot of uh, people a bit up their own asses? And <laughs> no, well, no. I mean, everybody's <laughs> tricky from time to time, but he... Who was the worst? He was the worst, yeah? He took the biscuit. He was, he, was, he, was, he was a real piece of work. And yet I love what he did. Yeah, I yeah. mean, Valma, I thought, it was a superb movie. Yeah. It's so, it, uh, I mean, um, it's so funny because it cost six months, $30 million, you get Lelios on Dangereuse, which was a similar movie, same movie, yeah, right, which was $10 million, but won awards, Academy Awards for Glenn Close, right. John Malkovich, and that was just the same yeah. movie, yeah. the right. same movie. It just goes In to fact, show sometimes. In fact, he was sometime. offered that, 
and he turned it down because it was, it was uh, 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 and he went back to France to make his own version of that of that which he which he did, but that went to nothing and and Les Lions on. Mm, did very well at the box office. Yeah, it just goes to show that sometimes you don't have to just pump loads of money into it, you know, yeah. like Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> She's yeah. gonna have to come on camera so people have to see who, who yeah. that person is in the corner. We're yeah, talking go on, to. let's do a little introduction. Yeah, well, this is Cindy Frankie, my partner. <laughs> Um, it's talking about uh, this guy like, kicking off like that and asking you to do um, what sixty takes. Um, the with the actors that you've uh, you've worked with, who's who's the biggest diva? Oh, the biggest diva! I'm trying to think now. Oh, goodness me, I've got a feeling you know, Tom Cruise is going to be one, isn't he? All right. Do you know what? Do you know what? I have to say that Tom Cruise was uh, so unlike um, what you think he's going to be. Really? He had this thing, now, now, so when I met him for the first time, right, okay, he came up and he talked to me. He has this thing which I think American politicians have, which is he stays with you. He completely locks into you. And he calls you a name, the first name all the, the time is Ian, name, Ian, Ian. He, he, he's mentioned things that I've been in said I loved you in this I loved you in that he had a whole list of stuff that I'd done yeah. whether he's seen it doesn't matter it's a system that said mention this mention yeah, that yeah. mention this but he locks into you and it's almost like saying don't talk to me don't come near me I'm with this person right and he just stays with you and it's like it's like an exercise it just stays in with you yeah and you go and you you feel a million dollars because wow. he's, he's he's giving you his time totally and he's locked into you he's not because we all do the same thing. We look away, we look at this, yeah, yeah. Know, we get bored. Da, 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 da. He was there. Yeah. And when he's finished, he's on to the next person. Wow. For that moment, you're the person. Mm. Yeah. And it, 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 whether it's a trick. It just makes you want to feel, feel like being around him all the time. Yeah, yeah. whether it's a trick or, or not. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I think I mean, the amount of respect that I've got for him and what he's done, it, it, you know, even just down to his... Uh, you, you know the stunts that he still does now and things like that. Yeah, and yeah. and am, am I right in thinking that he actually um, he learned to fly the planes for Top Gun too? I don't know, but I wouldn't I think, be surprised. I think he was. I mean, he a does, pilot he does anyway. so much. His his, pilot I, mean, license. I, mean, I mean, he does so much of his own stunts. I mean, he really does. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah, it's phenomenal. No, no, I mean, he was, he was, um, he was a, he was a delight to work with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and um, you know, I, I have to ask as well. Mel Gibson, you work with Mel Gibson? No, not not not, not Mel Gibson. It's good no. goddamn Google. Yeah, it's not no, always right, right, is it? No, you can't rely right. on Google, no. mate. No, but Lee Evans, I Lee actually Evans, a, a, a that must have been hilarious. Oh, hilarious, because he was a comedian, and then Peter Chelsea, the director, worked with him so brilliantly to give that performance in Funny Bones. Funny Bones, such an underrated film. I mean, it was just. I look back on it as, as, as another one of my real favourites, really, because it's an extraordinary film. And his performance in that is great. I work with him a little later, too, on a movie called Free Spring, in which he played yeah, a killer. Yeah, I'll tell you what, and he's he was, underrated he as just, an actor. No, I, I mean, that was, that was, that was, that was uh, Lee, Lee Evans in, in another area. Yeah. Because the, the one that he did with Funny Bones was very... Yeah. That was very him. Yeah, yeah. His performance he gives in freeze frame is a performance. It is really he's good. He's acting all the way through it. And he's he's, um, he's like a really creepy, weirdo, yeah. psycho guy. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's yeah. that's three I've got now. Top secret. No, honestly, Conspiracy. mate. Conspiracy. Yeah, freeze Funny frame bones. is really good. He shaves his head off and... Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. He's got his hair off. Not his head. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> that would be very good. Yeah. You know? I'll um, double it. But oh, I, 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 one of my most favorite films, and I watch it every single year. Um, which uh, uh, the original Matrix? No, <laughs> <laughs> A Christmas Carol. Oh, there oh you go. my god! Like, because I think I fell in love with it when I was younger. My um, my dad took me to the cinema to see Scrooge yeah. with Bill Murray. Yeah, and I absolutely scared the crap out of me as a kid. Um, but uh, I think it was, um, you know, death at the very end, you know, yeah. scared me. But uh, but since then, I watch, and I have to, it's like one of my things I do on Christmas, 
I watched the ritual. Chris, yeah, yeah, I watched Christmas Carol. Mm. What was that like working with joy, Patrick? Joy. I mean, I worked with. I mean, Sir Patrick. I mean, Sir Patrick, just, that's just, right. Just, yeah. You know, another legend, isn't it? I mean, that's extraordinary. I mean, I mean, there he was, RSC actor for years and years and years. Goes to the RSC, goes on tour with the RSC, doing doing Shakespeare. And who's sitting in the audience? But you know, the guy that created Star Wars. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, what's Star Trek? Name? Star Trek. Absolutely, the guy. He's there wow. watching the Shakespeare play, and he goes, "I found m m my next, you know." No way. And he takes it, and that's it. That's yeah. what you say about that luck again. I mean, just no, yeah, 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 yeah. But he literally went to see the Shakespeare play that he was doing, and from that he mm. gets Star Trek, and the rest is, you know. See that um, that particular uh, Christmas Carol. I'm sure, and I, and I may be wrong, but I thought that. When it first came out, it was actually, it was the same thing th week after week, but with a different uh, Scrooge. Because I remember Sir Patrick, uh, 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 he, he, he did it on the, I think on the third week. And before that, it was Phil Mitchell from EastEnders. Phil <laughs> Mitchell? It was. I forgot his name. I can't remember his name. No. But he did the first week, and then they got another actor to do a second week, and then Patrick Stewart did the third week, and then they kept replaying. Um, but it, that was around this period of time when it first came out. Uh, and then they, then f the year after that, they just kept the Patrick Stewart one. Am I wrong? Am I wrong there? No, I've Are you saying that. that they all did various versions of it? Is that what you're saying? It, yeah, it was basically the same. Th it was the same uh, uh, film over each week, but with a different main actor of Scrooge. I've oh, never heard that. I don't no? think so. No, no, no. It was uh, uh, the one we Unless made was, was just the one off. Right. Okay. I don't think any actors w were involved in it apart from. Because I, I do, re I do remember, I do remember. I mean, that must have been a dream that you had, a dream sequence that you had. I think, what? Oh, Phil Mitchell. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also, we have to uh, speak about um, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. And uh, bless and Amber. Us. Amber Turd. Oh, we've just oh, been God. watching. Hey. We we spent the last few nights watching YouTube. We we've been watching glued to it, glued to it with Amber and yeah. Last night we were watching Johnny. Wow, wow, wow. My wow. wife, my wife's glued to it as well. Is she? Yeah. yeah. And she, every time she's come home from work every day this week, straight on it, looking. Right. Yeah. Well, I have to say that um, uh, Jim Carrey and uh, Johnny Depp have got a similar thing. They have the same thing. They hate mornings. Oh, really? So I experienced both the same deal oh, on the set of Jim Carrey. I'd be, you know, picked up at six, go through makeup in the trailer, eight o'clock, nine o'clock came, still in the trailer, 10 o'clock came, at 11 o'clock, I'm thinking, well, they must be doing something else. And yeah. then he wasn't turning up. All right, still sleeping. He, he, he would turn up when he wanted to turn up, and he would turn up at maybe. 10 o'clock, then he'd go through makeup, and then eventually we'd get on the set. Uh, you know, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, a huge amount of time wasted. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, this must be costing them a fortune. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell, if they put the time on the end, that's more work for me, that's yeah. great. Yeah. But, but he wasn't turning up, and eventually, one of the producers summers up enough courage to say to him, look, Jim, is there any chance that you might be able, be able to come in a little bit earlier so we could go and he turned to me and he said and I was on the set when he said this he said do you want an opening weekend of 40 million dollars because I can give you that and he did <laughs> Ace Ventura broke records when it first came out for the yeah. opening weekend wow of 42 million dollars and Jesus. it never happened before no way and, he, and, he, and now it's 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 you know yeah. That's that's you know bird feed compared to what yeah they yeah now. yeah but that's what he gave them then but it's true and and Jolly was the same really didn't turn up <laughs> didn't, didn't turn, turn up he's sleeping all on day. the set I think on the day I only had one day with him because it was a short scene inside oh, okay. a, um, I played this uh, um, a morgue attendant throwing up and being sick and drunk and violent and so. But he, yeah. But did you um, get to, to obviously the one day? But did you, uh, you know, get to talk oh, to him a bit and get to course, know him quite course, a bit? Yes. Yeah. 
yeah. chats and talks and all the rest of it. And um, and I heard about him that he liked a bit of a magic cigarette at the end of the day. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, I mean, you say that. I mean, you, uh, the, the producers and that b- brought up them uh, the courage to. I would be thinking if these producers are paying them God knows how much money, they'd be like, "Oi, bang on, get out here now and do what you bloody you, you know yeah, you're told." I know. I know. Do you so, find that yeah. quite a bit with the, like the bigger people are the, the the producers like pussy foot around? Totally, absolutely, absolutely. They have to be well because you know the thing is this is that it, it, is that they. Um, it, it's tricky this because I mean in fact that's why actors are pampered so much they really are yeah because they're the people that have to got to they've got to go on and do the job and put it in front of camera so you have to be you know without them you've got nothing that's but it. you're treated I mean actors are treated very well I mean yeah. spoiled to death with with you know being picked up big nice places to change all the rest of it looked after very well you want a cup of tea you want a cup of coffee all that crap goes on mm. but it, it's really because they are told that actually you have to do this because they're the people who are going to be very nervous, they're going to be people who have got to perform, so be gentle with them, be careful with them, or else. so that's what they do. But you're right, I mean, they don't have the nerve to say, look, get in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you, you know. ever had your diva moments? Oh, I'm sure I've had <laughs> diva moments. <laughs> We're throwing cups, I want no. this now! Yes, it's yeah. exactly, no. No, I've been, you know, the thing is, I... I am very fortunate with the fact that, I mean, I started out in theatre as an assistant stage manager, which meant I made the tea and I made the coffee for people and I swept the stage, did the curtains, all the rest of it. So I had very menial jobs to begin with. In fact, my first job was mucking out the the coal house at the Fisherton Theatre in Salisbury Playhouse for the ponies in Cinderella. And I thought to myself, I can't get any lower in the theatre <laughs> than shoveling the shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's all up from here. And yeah. that's what it was. And so having had that basic training, uh, um, you know, I, that kept me grounded. In yeah. Terms yeah. Of, you know, I was just fortunate with what happened later. Yeah. It's people that don't have that. And I've worked with people who are very, very snotty and very not very good to be with on set and all the rest. Really? Like who? I can't, I can't, I can't <laughs> go on, go on, we've got no, to get this yeah. viral, we've got to get no. this video viral. <laughs> no, no, I think no. it'd be really difficult, I mean, imagine podcasting with someone like that, you know, like Ian, you're so humble, it's so yeah. easy to talk to. Yeah. You may, I was nervous meeting you. No, but, come on. No, come I, on, I seriously no. was, I seriously was, within five minutes, I was like, no, he's a lovely guy and, and you just, you know, yeah. I feel relaxed talking to you. Well, you should do it, I mean, yeah. you know, I, you know, absolutely. But it's then, nice. You know, but that's what I mean. It's just, you have to be grounded. You have to be mm. grounded because you can go. You can so easily go off and be a diva if you're not careful. It's yeah. like you said. You started at the bottom. You, yeah. you know, yeah. up from yeah. there. That's it. That's what's that's kept you humble, I reckon. I mean, that's what's kept you. You've seen the other grounded. side. You've seen the other side. <laughs> the other side. He wants names. <laughs> he wants me to. I'm just trying to think if there's anybody that I can give you. No, no, no. Difficult. I don't need names. No, no, I, I've no. said what I'm saying is um, you've seen. You know, um, because obviously at the moment you're you're probably living quite a comfortable life, but you've you know you've been on the other end before, yeah. Where you know things are a struggle, yes. No, you know, no, in the early days, because yeah, no, no, it was because I mean you know theatre doesn't pay very much, no. so you know I mean uh, and that's all I did to begin with, so yeah, no, I've been mean, so very lucky. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I was going to ask you, being you know flown around everywhere, where where is the nicest place you've been? In the nicest oh, countries. You must have seen a lot me. of places. Yeah, well, I've been very fortunate. I mean, strangely enough, I mean, going to. I was talking to this uh, uh, lovely taxi driver who brought me in today, <laughs> <laughs> and he said that one of his jobs was um, uh, he was in the army and 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 he had worked on the Falkland Island, and I said I, I've been there. Yeah, because we made a film called The Ungentlemanly Act, which was a movie about the taking of the Falkland Islands by the Argentinians. Right. right. And I played the uh, I played the Prime Minister. Wow. Um, that's, that's a that's a role and that and Ian Ian Richardson played the governor. And, and that was a good little movie. And, and uh, um, but but it was strange to be on a, an island like that. Yeah. Which is when we arrived uh, to make it which was uh, uh, not not so long after what had happened. 
but they just said, please don't go near any of the beaches because they're still mined. Oh Christ! So, so that was quite a sort of chiller, but uh, but that was an ex that was an interesting place to have been there mm, yeah. and done that. I made a lot of movies in in Europe. Okay, it's so strange because there have been these countries that hosted movie making, and it started with Hungary, then it went to Prague, right, Czechoslovakia, then it went to Bulgaria. So I made movies in all these places, and then it went to Bratislava, and uh, now it's back to Hungary again. It's gone it's like a full circle. Yeah. So all those places, because it was cheaper to make things, and I made like, Dune was made in Prague. Oh yes, I met, yes, yeah. Dune is another uh, film you've been yeah. in. With yeah, Dune. Christ. And what about? I, I mean, I mean, I went to see the, the 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 movie of Dune, which I think is extraordinary. Uh, I, I have to say that it's, it's visually. Have you seen it? I've seen Dune, yeah. I thought, I thought it was one of the most extraordinary visually movies. Absolutely. I haven't got Absolutely. a clue what the fuck was going on. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what it was about. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the visuals it's, were good. But the visuals were yeah, yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. What's and the like? Baron was hardly in it. Yeah. He's just not in it, is he? No. No. But, but what's it like actually seeing yourself on the big screen? Do you... Do you I can't get enough. I love oh, it. Oh, do you? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's because I can't get an. I could watch myself every night if I could. <laughs> at least, you know. What do you reckon, Cindy? Is that true? Yes, I think it's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's good though. You you should be. Uh, uh, have you ever? I suppose. Listen, listen. I watched Doc Martin with with, with Cindy, and I see her chuckle from time to time. Yeah, but like, and I say, stop it, stop it. So she starts with, "Isn't that good, Tony? Isn't that good? Isn't that reaction good?" <laughs> This is so funny. <laughs> I, I was laughing at John Marquez. Oh, thank you very uh, much. Yeah, the policeman. Oh, right. What, what would you say, uh, this might be a weird question, but what would you say is the most uh, difficult emotion to portray over on camera, to show on camera? Oh, Jesus, well, it's crying, isn't it? I mean, that's... A, oh, yeah. You always talked about... Oh, this is funny, this. So, on the Day of the Dead... Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, That's yeah. amazing. That is we amazing. Had an American actress, right, from um, American Beauty. All right. That movie. A uh, very pretty girl, and all the rest of it. And Hang on. Ameri I sorry. American Beauty. Is that Ke Kevin, Kevin Spacey? Spacey? Yeah, I remember yeah. the cover. There's a lady yeah. and she's yeah. laid on. Yeah. Yeah. Is it rose petals? Yeah, you, you would right. remember that cover, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah. You're dirty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, she was an American Beauty, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And she was this little, beautiful actress. Quite young, probably in her twenties, like, okay, and she, and she had to be emotional in, in the scene that we were doing, mm. and we didn't know quite what. She, she suddenly said, "Please, please, I will tell you when to turn over," and we go, "Okay," so because normally the director or the first assistant will tell you when to turn over. Yeah. But she says, "At this scene, I would like to say when we turn over," and I go, okay, she puts on a headset. And she's listening to what mm -hmm. a coach is telling her, right, okay? Mm. And the coach is saying something like, I would imagine, okay, it's your dog, and it's very bad news because your dog has oh, got yeah. cancer and he's going to die. Yeah. Next. And she's going, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turn over. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And there's, there's two of us. Looking at this, laughing our fucking heads off, <laughs> and then there's the phrase that there's the phrase that Laurence Olivier said to Dustin Hoffman uh, um, when, when du, 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 Dustin Hoffman had to come in through the door, and he'd been running, you know, and he, he, he they had to wait for him while he ran around the houses for a couple of times before he came in through the door, and, and Laurence Olivier goes. Try acting, dear boy. That's what he said to him. Oh, really? After he did that. And it's what you say to this girl. Try acting. Because it's like... <laughs> yeah. Turn yeah. over. <laughs> Very funny. Cry, can you hear that noise out? Yeah, I heard that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's... Uh, there was, I've, I've literally just gone blank now because of that, that noise out there. Uh, have you got anything you want to ask? Uh, probably, but I've probably forgotten. Yeah. Yeah, it'll come um, to me. There was something about a movie that you've been in and I'm just trying to look at my notes here now um, Day of the Dead was it that? no but I do remember um, your your accent your oh, American yes. accent in the beginning there you, you were so 
bit no, rocky. Or no? Okay. no, I think oh, it was good. fine. Oh, yeah. good, good. Yeah, but you were like this. You were this DJ, weren't you? I was. Yes, with that what? ponytail. Yeah, yeah. Have you, can you remember? Uh, mate, the, the zombie films, I've seen a lot of them, but I can never remember which one's what. Right, they're all right. Like the they're all the, the, same. Dawn, they're the same. The Dawn of the Dead. The, yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like, yeah. Well, if I saw it, I'd be like, yep, yeah, seen that. Yeah. You, you were saying about emotions. Um, that's, I remembered what I was going to say now. I suppose going into movies and you know television and things like that, there must have been the times where you thought to yourself, "Oh my God, one day I might get a sex scene or, you know, kissing." And you know what? It sounds a stupid question, okay? But what is that like for these actors and for yourself? I suppose you must have had kissing scenes and things like that. But is it? I mean, obviously you're going to be professional and things, and there's a big camera crew around, and it's not quite as uh, romantic as what it looks like, you know, on the big screen. But okay. well, it, it must be pretty sort of daunting, especially if you're married and. Years ago, right? Uh, one of the first movies I ever made was a movie called um, "The Lonely Passion of Judith Hearn." Right. And this was a movie I made with Maggie Smith and Bob Hoskins. And uh, it was a big part for me in the movie. Directed by Jack Clayton, who was a terrific guy, to the pumpkin eater. Um, and he did um, another movie that I'm trying to remember now, but he's done some big movies. And uh, my part, I had to be in bed with this girl. And I was just, uh, 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 and I had to be naked. Oh really? Not even yeah. I I full on. Yeah, do it. not these like fake pants that you get. And I had to. Uh, <laughs> wasn't naked, but yeah, but you I get had these. I had a dressing gown. That's right. And Bob Haskins had to come through the door, and uh, and uh, and surprise us. And then I had to get out of bed. So, so you, I think you saw my bottom at some point, and then I was able to put my dressing gown on me. But the girl, in in the scene with me, was so worried about what she had to do and she we'd done a play together as yeah, well at, yeah. uh, at the rsc um, <coughs> betty for a song at the um at the barbican and, and in fact i got her the role I, I pushed for her to get the role because i had to audition with these other girls i'd already got the part mm. and then they brought in these three or four girls and i said and they said what do you think i said it's her because she's so good and she was very good in it yeah but i remember on the day we did this she came into the, my dressing room and she, she'd had half a bottle of whiskey already. Right? All right, really? <laughs> and she literally took her dressing gown off and said, there, you've seen it. And I went, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, D darling, you've got, you've got nothing to worry about. Believe me, you, you're, you look great. But she yeah. was so nervous yeah. that she wanted to show someone. Get it out of the way. And it was, yeah. it was extraordinary, but, but, but it, was very, uh, it, was, it was very interesting. That, uh, but but yes, I mean it's not easy stuff. And she obviously found it very hard. Yeah. And and and, and you have this thing where they say it's going to be, it's going to be a control set or it's going to be a closed set or yeah. sort of, where they have reduced crews so not everybody's on the set at the same time. Yeah, it must be hard. But, uh, but I mean, you know, but that was my only entree into. But yeah, that mu that must be extremely tough for because yeah. uh, it's to be fair, it's usually the women, isn't it, that yeah. have to yeah. you know yeah. get naked or yeah. you know it must be very tough. And um, I suppose it's something that you just you take for granted, well, as the viewer, yeah. you t you take you take it all for granted, don't yeah. you? What yeah. you know, actors actually have to go and do and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You know, even down to um, you know stunts. I mean, look at yeah, I think Tom Cruise chooses to do a lot of his stunts, doesn't he? Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan, he's absolutely. Bro he's broken ankles and yeah. stuff. He's yeah. broken, I think he's broken his body in yeah. numerous places. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, because... He, he has an extraordinary team, right? Who, Jackie Chan? Because what, 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 he, what he did, watched him on a few times on the set, is he has his team of, of people that does all, all, all sorts of stunts for him. Right. And he will choose, right? They will work out what the stunt is going to be and they will do the stunts while you're rehearsing and all the rest of it, he will look at them and then he'll choose what he wants to do himself. Right. So he'll let, because they're oh. all dressed up like him. Yeah. And they've got, all, they've, got all, they've got all sort of talents for various things. Right. So whatever the stunt is, he will pick who is going to do it. Right. And then on the day, he will go, I'll do that one.
He'll choose one. He'll choose one, or he'll choose to do that, or he'll say, I'll let you do that one. Yeah. You do that one. Oh, of course. Have you done any stunts? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I can't wait for someone to... I'm going to walk across it. Will you do it for me? Do you walk across it <laughs> Have yeah. you ever like a stunt double or anything like that? Oh, loads of stunt doubles. Yeah, I mean, I had a stunt double recently. I had a stunt double on the uh, on the on the Ridley Scott film. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, the guy turned up and he said, I, I, "I've doubled for you several times," and I said, "When?" And so he talked through various uh, uh, shows we'd done together. And I yeah. Said, okay. So he's he's in my costume. We were there together, and, and um, I think he had to. Um, I think what happens is my carry Louis Louis the Eighteenth. Uh, um, Napoleon is coming. Right. Joachim Phoenix is coming to the. Um, uh, uh, so we have to leave the palace very quickly. So so I. So I think what they did was that they there was a staircase going down, and they. They got one person either side of, of my stunt double, carry him down the stairs oh, yeah. to the stagecoach. And so he's just, and my bit, I joined at the top. They did him taking him down the stairs, and I, and I did a little bit just getting into the carriage from the other side. So, right, yeah. so he did the bit in the, in the middle. What, what's it? What was it like um, working with? Uh, I'm sure you've worked with green screens and things like that. How yeah. how that must be quite difficult. In well, that some sequence ways. at the beginning of Ace Ventura of uh, him walking up the stairs. Oh, okay. Do you remember right? Yeah, right yeah, yeah. When he gets a slinky. Staircase. No, y yes, the slinky. Yeah, yeah. Have a later. But there's this thing right at the beginning where you see my character walking up the stairs of this huge, in the middle of the Himalayas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, goes yeah. on forever. That was green screen at the beginning. So you see me walking up stairs with green screen there and a lot of the dune stuff yeah i was just I gonna say green yeah screen mm -hmm. it, and, yeah. All, and all the cgi which i suppose yeah. you've seen like you know come yeah. into fashion and that and so much so yeah. much now is cgi we've got a lot of cgi on doc martin christmas special this year as well oh really yeah i yeah. did think that when i saw that scene i thought they must be green screen oh, the well, yes so just no. a little area that yeah. he's walking through that they've sprayed yeah. no yeah, no, no they've got a lot of cgi for various things so yeah the, Pushing the boat out for the last series and the last Christmas special. Yeah, it must. Get, it's going to be quite emotional for you, isn't it? I mean, I think it will be. Yes, I mean, I think it will be for us all. I mean, to say goodbye to this. Yeah. Yeah, we're pushing for the. There's got to be, you know, there's got to be the spin-off. <laughs> My son Joe Absalom Allenby, <laughs> write into ITV now and tell them you have uh, the spin-off for the large boys. <laughs> yeah. For the large boys. <laughs> oh, um, you were you. Uh, He's famous, and uh, uh, some some ladies are after him, aren't they, mate? What, what was it you, oh, you found? Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got his own little the Burt Large Lovers Group. That's it. Is that it? Burt yeah, Large and they club. are coming to Port Isaac. Really? In June, led by Gloria, who is the head of the Burt Large Lovers Group. They're gonna Cindy, you're gonna you. be there, like fighting them off, aren't you, Cindy? <laughs> I made. To <laughs> I made a big mistake once saying I held these women of sixty years old, and they went, ah, "We're not all so some are younger than that." And I said, "Oh my god!" So I now okay, have to 59. say women of a certain age. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh god! Oh, really? Got in a real big trouble there. Ian, what's your favorite movie ever? Well, favorite question. Ah, well, I think Ace Ventura because that's where I met Cindy, obviously. Yeah. Oh, okay. I would think so. She was production coordinator on the movie, so yeah. yeah. I would say that. Oh, on, on that movie, were you? Yeah. Wow. We, we, we need a speech to you. <laughs> we do. We do. And um, I suppose uh, I suppose we're coming up to the end of it now, I really. Guess so. Yeah. Well, what about what about a movie that uh, you haven't starred in? What is, what's your favourite movie that ever for, from all the movies? What from all the movies? Yeah, I do. Or have have you got one? Have no, you got a favorite? What, he's uh, he's saying of uh, your favorite movie, not necessarily what you've been. A favorite in, movie that was well, The Godfather. I, I mean, I always look oh, back on Godfather. that as um, Godfather. an extraordinary film. Yeah, I really do. I, yeah, I love yeah. all the uh, the gangster movies. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, and yeah. <clears throat> finally, then last question: If there is a one role that you would love to play or be in. Or a film that you'd be in, like for example, Bond or something like that. What would it be? Have you have you got like your oh. idea? I'd love to be a villain, or I'd love to be a main character in this. Or yes, no, that's it. Do you know what? I'm, I'm just trying to think. I mean, I'm so lucky. Oh yeah, cowboy. 
Oh, you wanted to be I'd a like cowboy? I'd a cowboy film, yeah. Yeah? Always wanted to be in a cowboy film, yeah. City Slickers? And there was a, cho- there was a chance a little while ago, it was with Brendan Fraser, and we got very close. Right. And, and it, it was a cowboy film. I was going to be in a cowboy film, and I was really, really excited. And, and they had some of the sets built. I met the director, all the rest of it, and then it all folded. Oh, oh, so at the yeah. last minute, and so that would have been great. Mm. Did you watch a lot of that as a kid? Did you like, like a cowboy, cowboy films? films yeah. Yeah. yeah, Clint Eastwood and yeah, all that stuff. You know, yeah, I love cowboy films. Right, yeah. Darren Clyde. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, maybe the next film or something. You'll you you have to speak to your uh, your manager. I will. Yes. Yeah. So come on, come on, let's yeah. get this going. Let's get it going. But Ian, thank you so much. I I, well, I've had a lovely time. Thank you. Thank I you, hope you Ian. have. My favourite subject is talking about myself. What more can I want? <laughs> what more can I want? Great stuff. Um, and also remember uh, the R N I uh, the R L N I R. You're not what, very good one. with letters, yeah. No, I'm not. The no. EMF, the yeah, P- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the R-N-L-I. description. Yes. Is yeah. it, thank you, Mace. I, right, I knew you came in for a summit today. Yeah, that's it, you know. It's in the we'll description, so please no, uh, donate kindly. Thank you so much. Well, Thanks, Ian. Be, and thank you, great. Cindy. Being very kind and uh, uh, quiet over there. I'll tell you some stories in a minute. Okay. Oh, will yeah. Okay. <laughs>